I'm Phoenix Vice Mayor Jim Waring, Chair of the City's Human Trafficking Task Force. We are committed at the City of Phoenix to combat human trafficking. The average age of entry for a victim into the life of a human trafficking victim is 14. And there are 300,000 children at risk nationwide. We have to combat human trafficking at the City of Phoenix. We have a five-year plan to eradicate this horrible crime. Human trafficking is not just a law enforcement issue. You too can help in the fight against human trafficking. In this show, you're going to learn what to look for so you can spot someone who's being abused and learn who to contact in order to get that person the help they so desperately need. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'm Deborah Cedillo Dugan. And joining me now in the studio to talk about common signs of exploitation and recruiting techniques used to attract these young people is Sergeant Chris Bray. He's a 35-year veteran of the Phoenix Police Department. Sergeant Bray has spent the last 20 years of his career working with organized crime and drug enforcement bureaus, gang squad vice enforcements, internet crimes against children, and today, human trafficking and child prostitution. Thank you so much for joining us here today, Sergeant Bray. Um, I also want to note, obviously, he is in silhouette due to his undercover um, work. Let's start off with uh, defining sex trafficking. I know some may think it's this, some may think it's something else. Define it in your own words. Okay, commercial sex trafficking is the term we prefer. And essentially what it is is obtaining a sexual services from another for a fee or something of value. So you could look at it as a place to stay, money, food, drugs, Lots of different things that can go ahead and apply to that. But where we see it most often in children is how it's going to manifest is with a place to stay or money or protection. Okay. Well, let's go on and, and, and start off with the, the actual warning signs. You have a 13-year-old, 14-year-old, because we're talking child prostitution, sex trafficking. We're talking 18 years and under, correct? That is correct. Okay. Let's talk about some warning signs. Maybe a parent, a friend, an aunt, or an uncle. Maybe somebody down the street may see in a, in a young person. The number one telling sign is when you're going to see a sudden change in behaviors, uh, moody, secretive, angry all the time. You may see a sudden change in the friends that they have with them. Uh, if a girlfriend or boyfriend that's more than 10 years older than the child appears on the scene, that's a warning sign. I would say that would be a big uh, warning sign. Indeed it is. You might also see the child suddenly show up with money or cell phone or gifts that can't be explained. That's part of the wooing process, part of the seduction process that a pimp may engage in to win the child over. You may also see hotel cards. Uh, you may even see an ad placed on an internet website depicting your child. So some of them are very, very subtle. Some of them not so subtle. So you talked about social media and, and, and the website too. So how do, how do parents even monitor that or get into and say, hey, I want to check out what you're posting or what, what you're on Facebook or how, how, how can they do that? Well, there's several ways. The number one way is to just insist on being a friend. You're going to friend me and you're going to give me unlimited access to everything that's on your web page. Now, does that stop the child from setting up a faux web page? And, and that really was my point. Because exactly. yes, because yes, you're, 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 you're going to friend your parents or your mom or dad, but how does a parent know that, that they're not setting up another? Well, be the friends of others, of your children's friends, okay. and get in there and pay attention. So much of the problem stems from being unaware or missing those signs until it's too late. If a child runs away more than three times, that's something unexplained absences from school. All of this put together starts to paint a picture that this child is going into a very, very dark place. So those warnings, are they are very, very scary because a parent may see some of those signs and may address it like, oh, you know, they just, for now, but I mean, if they start escalating, I mean, because, you know, a lot of things you can think of, well, maybe there's uh, uh, some kind of disorder with their child or something, but you really have to pay attention to those right at the start. You have to pay attention to them and you cannot rationalize because when you try to rationalize what you're seeing, you're giving the child an excuse and you're also 
kind of excusing the obvious. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that. This is such a heinous crime and it can happen so fast and the child can go missing so quickly that you cannot afford to rationalize or to excuse or not ask the questions. So let's talk about the rec recruiting techniques because now we're talking about um, the social media, the unexplained gifts, things like that. But you know, these kids are going to school, maybe they're not going to school. Who are these children that, that these predators are really you know, uh, going after or prying on? Well, you really can't come up with a profile per se of what children are going to become involved. Uh, there's something like 750,000 children a year that go missing according to the FBI. Incredible. And less than a third of those are actual abductions. The rest of them are runaways. Mm -hmm. Are there are throwaways as well, correct? Absolutely, throwaways. Term? Generally though, the throwaways won't be reported. Okay. But if you're looking at where does this child being recruited, if they are in a runaway kind of condition, within the first 48 hours, they're going to be approached by a sexual predator. The first 48 hours? Yes, ma'am. And we're talking a runaway 18 and younger, or it could be 18 and over as well? Well, I guess there are generally adults 18. 18 years okay. under is going to be the runaway. Okay. And that's pretty much the person that you're, we're targeting. You, mm -hmm. If you want to look at it from a strictly predatory kind of nature mm -hmm. of these people, mm -hmm. they are looking for that person in the pack, in the herd, that's weak. Mm -hmm. If it's the child that's looking lost at a bus station, if it's somebody that's hanging around a mall after hours, mm -hmm. if it's somebody that's dumpster diving because they're so hungry, those are the people that these predators are going to prey upon. That's who they're looking for. And it can be any place where a child is going to be found. So yes, it happens on our school grounds. Yes, it happens at our shopping malls. Yes, it happens at our sporting events. Predators go where the prey is. So they're going to be following those children around. They're going to be looking. And they're going to make contact. It's very much a, almost a salesmanship kind of thing where you hit and contact so many people, all it takes is one to say yes. Mm -hmm. Or you've got several on the line that might say yes later on. That's the person, the people that you're going to be going for. So what, what's being engaged as far as a conversation and they're going after? What, what are they telling these young people? What are they promising them to actually lure them away into this, this it's dark life? And I also want to point out, too, this is all over and happening in Phoenix. It's not just happening in certain areas, which we'll get into oh, this in a is minute. All over. But let, we'll, we'll get into that in a second. But what are they, what, these recruiting efforts, what are, they, what are they saying to lure these kids? What I want to do in my initial contact is find out where you're having problems in life. Whether it's school is going bad, you don't have family structure, uh, you're not getting the attention or the love that you feel you should get. A pimp is a master at finding that empty spot in a child or an adult. They fill that place with lies and then they exploit them. It's very simple. And that's what these predators are, they're that's pimps. That's what those predators and those they're, pimps they're are. And they're pimps, straight Absolutely. out. Absolutely. And a pimp is? A pimp is a person who is the go-between between a person looking to buy sex and a large person that is selling sex. However, all of the money goes to the pimp. So it's not like you're helping this child by giving them money because all money will go to the pimp. Rule number one is the pimp will get paid. And yes, prostitution, game as it's called, actually has a lot of rules. So let's talk about some of those rules and let's talk about living conditions and what's happened. These, these kids now, or if they're the, whether it be a throwaway, runaway, or they've actually been, for all intents and purposes, abduct, abducted, um, where are they living? What, where, how are they sustaining the, their food and shelter? Well, it's very, <laughs> there are so many variables to that. Uh, they can be at the pimp's house, his apartment, they can be staying in a hotel, they can be staying with other people at a hotel. They can even be living at home still. Part of the problem is that people want to come up with a, it always looks like this. And you can't say that. You take the warning signs, you take the context the children have. And let's face it, if a child's home life is really pretty poor, and all of a sudden they are living in a hotel, they're going out for every meal, they're getting clothes, they're getting hair done, manicure, pedicure, uh, getting lavish attention placed on them. It's very easy to see where that person could come up with, a, well, he's not such a bad guy. And once that idea of you owe me is kind of ingrained in the child, well, that's when they start calling that note due. And that's when I'm going to suggest to you. Or it may be as simple as like, 
to come on where you're pretty. You know you are model pretty. Now I, you know, I happen to be a photographer and it spins off from there. Now we've heard those. I think those, th those are the classic ones. We've heard oh, those absolutely. around. So, so th what, it, what should the community be doing? What responses should they be, you know, I mean, they, they need to look out or just, you know, just don't have blinders on as you're walking past and may, may see something that's amiss? If you see, some, see something, say something. I know that that's getting overused right now. It's simple. It works. It's simple. It I get works. it. Right. And don't make the rationale for them. You know, much like I said about making a rationalization for your child, don't make it for somebody else's child either. Right. People have lost track that those people that are out on the street or advertising on the internet as an escort, as a stripper, as whatever, that's somebody's daughter, that's somebody's little girl, in some cases that's somebody's little boy, and somebody's worried about them. And we lose track of that because we are saying who you are is what you do. And that's not the case in all of these. So many of these victims get lured into it and by the time they realize just how bad it is, they're in too deep. Because a pimp's end game is to separate you from your family, your friends, and your support system. So I'm going to get you so that the only person you can count on is me. As the pimp, I wanna be your sole source for food, for clothing, for shelter. Anything you need has to come through me. Over time, that's going to build up such a feeling of indebtedness and dependence it's going to be very difficult for you to get away from me. And we talked a little bit before we started the interview, too, about, you know, who these young people are. And you said it, it really is. It, it's rampant. It's all over Phoenix. It's in the nice areas, the not-so-nice areas, the middle-income areas. It's all over. And what happens? I mean, I just, I'm still, still trying to understand, like, you know, we were talking, hey, there's people that are educated, that are, you know, have good jobs at whatever, and they just get into this this horrible, horrible trade, if you, if you will, and it just spirals downhill. It spirals down so fast, that's what people lose track of. They forget you, their normalcy. They, they forget, forget what their normalcy. life was like. Essentially, what I'm going to do is take your normal and replace it with mine. Your normal may be attending school, going with the family, you go home of an evening, you get up in the morning, you go to school, you come home, you do homework, you have dinner, you have a little family time. Go to sports. And it repeats, go to right. sports events whatever thing you have after school. In the prostitution life, in that sex trafficking life, you're going to be getting up in the afternoon, you're going to grab a bite, and then you're going to go out to work. You're going to be on the street, you're going to be on the internet, and you're gonna start taking care of clients. And that's all you do until you make the amount of money I order you to make. Because that's part of the rule is, rule number one, the pimp will get paid. Rule number two, don't talk about it, and it just goes on from there. So depending on who's laying out the rules, there's a bunch. But the bottom line is the money, and the money comes from the people that are the, the demand side of this equation. It's a business, and it's ex it exploitation. It's exploitation, obviously, that, that all means. Let's talk about the actual uh, abuse and how these young victims are being treated. I mean, obviously the sexual abuse is there, but is there other physical and violent abuse? Obviously, mental abuse is a huge part of this as well for these young people. You know, it's, it's sad. I have talked to victims, and as I'm looking at this young person, I'm looking at bruises that are exposed. And anytime someone is injured, you know, the first part of this is you may have a slight swelling. It'll be a little red, maybe a little swollen. And over the next couple of days, it'll turn into a bruise. Okay, and as it heals, it's going to kind of fade to green, fade to yellow, and then gone. Now imagine you're talking to somebody who has bruising all over her body in different phases of healing. That tells you that that person's been abused, beaten every day. It's heartbreaking. It is. Somebody that outweighs you by 100 pounds, has 40% more muscle mass, holds you down and beats you until they get tired of it. Somebody that pulls you out of that chair by the hair of your head so hard it causes your scalp to separate from your skull. In many instances, paramedics will see these. Emergency room department people will see them. Not necessarily the police. The injuries that are physical are horrible, but the, what happens in the mind is even worse. Because we've had instances where I'm going to beat, as the pimp, I'm going to beat somebody and make you watch. 
if you've ever seen somebody abused like that, it, it is actually chilling. It is very, very disturbing. And somebody that has the coping skills, the maturation, the worldliness, if you will, of a 15-year-old, 16-year-old, the only thing they're really realizing is, oh my God, I'm glad that's not me. But that traumatic event is always going to be there in the back of their mind. So when you start talking about post-traumatic stress disorder mm -hmm. and the scars, the psychic scars that are left on these victims, mm -hmm. it's huge. Yeah, the mental scars that are Absolutely. in the years of counseling and, and what they're gonna have to go through and what they've endured physically, like you said, physically, mentally, right. the violence in itself. How much does alcohol and drugs play um, a role in all of this? You know, a lot of attention has been given to that as in which came first. And it doesn't really matter which came first because it is part and parcel to sex trafficking. Your life is so horrible and so jammed up that you would do anything for a little peace and quiet. Just something to get you away from your existence for a little while. So you're going to turn to alcohol. You're going to turn to drugs. And it's only going to get worse because you're going to need more and more and more to quiet that. And as that addiction deepens, well, then your marketability decreases. And as your marketability decreases, you're making less money, but you've still got to support your drug habit and the pimp. And as you can see, it is a downward spiral. It it's is. a horrible downward spiral. Because that's when the violence is happening too, because you're not making the money, you're addicted to drugs, you're addicted to alcohol, exactly. and you're not looking pretty and, and, and all of those other things too. It, the only study that has actually been done long term on this group shows that the average age, exit age for women is 34. And that also happens to be the average age of mortality for a prostituted woman. 34 years old, that carves about, what, 40 some years off of the person's life expectancy. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I don't want to give the impression that this doesn't happen to males too, mm -hmm. because young men also get into this. They right. pretty much get into the sex trade at the same time frame but they age out, if you will, at 25. And that's because they are no longer marketable. Let's talk about the victim response and uh, the first job of law, law enforcement to, to locate and to arrest these pimps. Let's talk a little bit about that process. Well, actually our first job is to rescue that victim. First and locate, foremost, absolutely. Absolutely. Phoenix police, all of the Valley, the FBI, we have adopted a very much a victim-centered approach. Our job is to get that victim out of that, out of that situation, get them stabilized, get them in connection with services. Then when that victim is stable, then they're going to be more of a mindset to help us go after the prosecution, go after the people that did that to her or him. And so it's, then we start looking for the, the pimp, the pander, the recruiter, if you will. After that, we start looking for the customers because you have to apply pressure to all sides of this in order to effectively create some kind of deterrence for it. And I'm hoping there's some success stories. I'm, please tell me there are. Oh, ab absolutely. Just, there yes. are some wonderful success stories well, out there. People are, in fact, reunited, and, and the people counseling are reunited. That's have, has to happen for these absolutely. young people. It's happening. Survivors are becoming more and more mainstream. Uh, survivors are going on to help others that have been trafficked, to come to grips with it, to get them recentered, refocused. And I think part of the problem with this is that they feel so isolated, so alone. And they feel like everybody knows what they've done and that's not the case. Do some people know what they've done? Might the pimp have taken some compromising photos? Have there been threats to expose you to all your family and friends about what you did? Yes. But there are people who have gotten through this hell and come out the other side the better person for it. That's so well said. And touching, our, and touching other lives and helping and assisting Absolutely. for people to, for recovery, overall recovery. And I, like I always like to say is that, you know, thank God we're, we're given a brand new day every single day so we can start totally anew. So I, I thank you so much for your time today. I really do. I think you've given us some incredible uh, information about victims' rights, about warning signs, uh, and I'd like to just recap about our warning signs right now. If we can put up a, a graphic, especially for parents, 
some uh, warning signs, um, just to, again, to uh, summarize. Again, unexplained changes in behavior, friends, grades, manner of dress or school attendance, uh, a boyfriend or girlfriend with more than 10 years of age difference. If you start seeing maybe hotel keys or unexplained gifts, uh, obviously running away from home is not a good sign. Uh, unexplained injuries, tattoos or piercings, suspicious social media activities. Uh, also, uh, possibly, uh, possible living near an area known for prostitution as well are some of the warning signs. Now, these warning signs are primarily for parents or people that you may know. But what about people you don't know and you're out in the community? Or maybe it's an adult, Chris. What do, what do you do then? Well, when you're out in the community, you're going to pretty much know the ebb and flow of what your neighborhood, what your community looks like. So one of the examples that I use frequently is that if you see somebody sitting on a bus bench for an extended period of time, the bus keeps coming and they're still sitting there. But as you kind of watch them, you may see them go up and talk to somebody in a car. They may lean into the car. Usually it's going to be a lone male driver. You may see somebody walking the same stretch of road time for time for time for time. And that's going to be one of the things. Or if you're at a hotel or a nightclub, you may see somebody, usually a single woman, maybe two women, that are going up and approaching single men. And they go from one to another to another to another. Generally, it's something that is out of phase with the comings and goings in your community. So people in a park that may not have a reason for being there as long as they are, or they're kind of camping in the park, if you will. That homeless thing is going to involve sex trafficking. And once again, I want to stress that this is not just a child-involved crime. This also involves adults. It's anybody that is in there, a vulnerable position, a vulnerable situation, that's gonna make them prone to a predatory attack. So again, that, that goes back to that, if you see, see something, say something. So if you're out in the community, you gave us some really good examples, you're at a mall, and if something just doesn't feel right, what, what can, you know, it may be an adult, maybe, it, like I said, maybe a younger person, what, what, what should you do? If it is a crime in progress, by all means, call 911. Do not risk your own safety. Most times the victim will not have any contact with you because they're being watched. They are forbidden from having any contact with anybody that's not going to be a customer. So you only put yourself at risk. And this could be an adult, as you said. An adult or a child. If it's in progress, call 911. If it is something that has happened a while ago, this may be something that you thought about, this may be something that a coworker told you, if you have information like that, by all means, call the Polaris Project. Okay, this is a big community. We're the sixth largest city in the country. Lots of sporting events, lots of activities happening. So it's, it's not just the park or the mall or in their community. Again, you said it could happen anywhere, correct? It can happen anywhere. You're going to have a, an assembly of people with a lot of disposable income. And this is all about the money. All about the money. And these are adults who attend these, these kind of events. These are adults who attend. Absolutely. But don't rule out a juvenile purchasing from another juvenile. If you go into this with a preconceived notion of what a John or a customer is going to be, or what a victimized child or victimized adult is going to look like, you're going to miss things. Pick out what is unusual about that behavior, how it doesn't fit, and go in with your eyes open. These are what it can look like. It can be a combination of these. It might be just one. It might be that guy at the mall that's going up to a group of three young women or young girls at a time, and he's talking to groups of three here and there and around, and he's doing that for hours. Okay, that's the rule of three. And many times that's a recruiting technique used. So keep in mind, if it's out of the ordinary and you watch it and it looks like something we've discussed, by all means, if the perpetrator's there, if the victim's there, 911 that incident immediately. And as you said, too, that uh, the Phoenix Police always says, too, that we're the best eyes on the ground, too, as a community. Be the very best witness you can be. I need somebody that when I get there, I can talk to somebody. My suspect may be gone. My victim may be gone. But those witnesses are key to solving this and to a successful prosecution. More importantly, they are the key to a successful rescue. And that's what it's all about, too. That's what it's all about. Well, thank you again for spending so much time with us today and, and enlightening on this topic that affects uh, both uh, men and women and, of course, our, our young people as well.
Thanks Thank again. We also want to remind viewers, if you see something, say something. Immediate reporting is critical. If a crime is in progress, please call 911. Now, if you suspect trafficking activity, call the Polaris Project at 1-888-373-7888. Back to you now, Vice Mayor. Thank you for taking the time to watch this important show. Now that you know what to look for, you too can help in the fight against human trafficking.